You're listening to episode 18 of the Air Hug Community Podcast. You're listening to the Air Hug Community Podcast. I'm your host, Judy Arizoza, and on this podcast, I bring you conversations and stories from guests and myself that inspire us to thrive on a higher level. We talk about things like relationships and habits for optimal health and how we see the world. Whether you are a mother or an other, the Air Hug Community is here to help you realize that improving the lives of others will boomerang back to you exponentially. And remember, not to be too serious. Life is better with a daily dose of smiles and air hugs. All right, well, I'm coming to you straight from my bedroom closet. (laughs) Yeah, so what? Yeah, anyways, uh, my daughter is here visiting. I'm recording this in December, and so she's here for the holidays and also working from home. So we're sharing an office. So I hopped down here to my closet to record this episode so that I didn't interfere with her work and her work didn't interfere with our sound. So anyways, that's where we're at today. And uh, welcome to the birthday episode. So I kind of debated on what to call this episode today, but um, here's what we're going to talk about. We're talking about living well and dying fast. So It's the birthday episode, and I debated on recording this because on the one hand, it sounded somewhat selfish to me to give you like the story of my trial and error. But then when I thought about it a little more closely, I remembered that the whole purpose of this podcast is to improve the lives of others. And so if even you take one little bit or piece from this and it makes a difference in your life, then this episode was definitely worth recording. And so let's move on. All right. So I have always enjoyed having my birthday at the end of the year. So I have a December birthday and I've always found it to be somewhat convenient because for me, the end of a year and starting a year coincides closely with the calendar year, which is a time where we often think of new beginnings. And that's how I've always thought of my own birthday is thinking about, you know, what went well, what didn't go well, what what are we going to keep and what not. It's a time of editing, a time of beginning, a time of getting rid of of what doesn't work and a time of embracing what we know already does work. And so I came up with a number of things that I wanted to share that I have thought about this past year and the several years before it. So this is somewhat of a milestone birthday for me. Um, I'm not going to say which one, but the big thing I want to, the point here is don't play the old card in life and make your own joy. So you can carve your own path and you don't have to just, because a certain number shows up on your um, calendar, if you're a certain age or whatever, you don't have to play to that age or that calendar. So having thought that and thought about this for quite a while here, I came up with some reflections of passing from one year to the next. And I want to share six of them with you. So are you ready? Let's get to it. Here's number one. Don't be steered by what others think is important. So here's an example about that. In December this month in uh, one of my Facebook groups, our Air Hug community, in fact, we have been doing some challenges. And so for December, we decided to do a sugar-free challenge. Actually, I offered up the option for people to do a sugar-free challenge. And while some people were very happy to do it, other people decided it just wasn't for them. And so I made a point of actually going on live and saying, look, Don't do this challenge if it's not right for you. Don't do it because other people think it's important. If it's not important to you or it's not an issue, then just skip this challenge. And so that was met with um, some great comments. And I think a lot of people got the point. You know, here's another thing like fad diets. 
just because so-and-so is doing keto or whatever their latest diet is doesn't mean that you have to do it. Don't be steered by what others think is important. You know, another thing is feeling the need to have traveled to XYZ because other people have done that or feeling the need to do anything because other people see it as an, an important thing to do in their life. You really get to have to get honest with yourself and decide what's important to you and then do that because here's the thing. Most people have their own problems and they don't really care that much about you. You know, I think most people don't really care that much about me, about what I'm doing. They're much more concerned about themselves as they should be, right? And they don't really give us as much thought as we think they do. And so we're putting all this thought into worrying about what other people think when they're probably not even thinking about us, right? So, <laughs> and if they are, remember this, their opinion of us is really none of our business. So don't be steered by doing what you think others think is important. All right, let's move on to number two. This one's a little bit more lighthearted. Number two in our reflections of uh, my milestone birthday year is that endorphins are my drug of choice. So I like to think of endorphins kind of like an apple a day keeping the doctor away, right? Um, any way you want to get endorphins is great, you know, and I will say over the years, endorphins are w the best way to get endorphins regularly is exercise. But any way you want to get that exercise is up to you. So over the years, my methods of exercise have definitely shifted and changed. You know, there are times where I want to do things one way or another, but I always do something. You know, I it's a rare week or month in my life where I don't exercise five out of seven days. Um, used to be six out of seven days, but I will tell you that my body has told me it needs two days to recover. And so I've listened. But, you know, this is awesome for maintaining cardiovascular health and a robust metabolism. And it doesn't matter. Whatever your thing is, is what you can do. So, this was great because the first time we bought our cable machine many, many years ago, um, and I love the cable machine we have. It is such an iron workhorse. It works amazing, and it's literally from the last century, which is crazy, but it's awesome. But the person who sold it to me said, the best piece of exercise equipment for you is the one that you will use regularly. So that's just my point. Endorphins are an amazing drug of choice. They are a feel-good hormone, and the best way to get them is with some sort of physical activity. And I think that we definitely have to value that as being our own source of joy. So let's move on to number three. Number three, one of the things I've learned over the years, and I've definitely uh, been slow on the uptake with this, is that sleep matters. So as much as I would love to be a party person and stay up late at night, the fact of the matter is I'm a morning person. And so if I lose that sleep or screw up my routine, it does my body no good. In fact, sleep is amazing for keeping digestion and gastrointestinal harmony. And if you want to know more on that, you can check out, check out episode 17 with Dr. Jillian Tita. But sleep also, getting enough sleep actually helps balance our stress hormones. It makes us a nicer person. So, you know, and it just makes our outlook so much nicer. You know, people talk about getting hangry. I don't know what, what kind of word you can come up for sleepy, angry, slangry. I don't know, but it's not a good thing. And I'll tell you what, when I'm slangry, you know, sleep deprived and angry, all sorts of things that I would regret, decisions would happen that I would regret later. So sleep matters. All right, number four, I love this one. Surround yourself with people who make you level up. So I learned this a long time ago, um, and you can kind of, I'm sure you've all heard of this little expression before that if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to be in a new room, right? So 
how do you surround yourself with people who make you level up? Well, some of the options that I have gotten so much benefit out of over the years are enrolling in masterminds, hiring coaches. Um, you know, I had three nutrition certifications and I went ahead and enrolled in a year long precision nutrition, nutrition certification because I wanted to be held accountable and I wanted to be, you know, this was a very thought provoking. It wasn't just read this, take a test. It was very thought provoking assignments that were a year long and I can't tell you how much I got out of this. So it's just no non nonsense. Um, back when I was bodybuilding and again, already had three out of the four nutrition certifications, I still hired a nutrition coach because I wanted to go ahead and be accountable, but I also wanted to level up. I wanted someone to make me level up so that I knew and I didn't second guess myself. So um, now I am so fortunate because the Grateful Fitness community that that I've been cultivating over the last 11 years has come to a point where the members that are here, and they're all screened, um, they are some of the smartest, sharpest women I know. And so we have such a synergistic relationship. Shout out to you ladies if you're listening. But it goes both ways. Like I so look forward to having our group sessions because whether it's on Zoom because we chat before or in person, it's we always work to make everyone else do better. And we're not just talking about sets and reps and what we eat. We're talking about life. We get on all sorts of topics. And it's just a wonderful thing to be able to have this community where we all benefit. You know, we really touch on so many different things. And another um, person who really has helped me to level up throughout my whole life, because I've known him for most of my life, is my husband. He always encourages me to level up. One of the things that he is very no-nonsense about, and I tend to be more flippant about, is finances. And he's been a great influence on me in helping me to learn and just do better at managing finances and just having a business plan. He's been awesome. So, and by the way, we do have a finance episode coming up. I'm really excited about that, but we will, uh, I'm not sure when that's coming up. It'll be sometime in the next five or six episodes. So anyways, all right. Number five, love what is, not what you think is. So I'm going to get a little Byron Katie on you here because Byron Katie is, has been very influential in my life. She's an author and she's written a number of books, but uh, her most, I think, influential book in my life has been Loving What Is. And she talks about examining beliefs around negative situations or situations that you perceive to be negative. And she asks us to ask some questions about what we think about these situations. The first question is, is it true? And she's always very careful to say, she's not saying that it is and she's not saying that it isn't. She asks us to examine if we believe it's true. And then we take a step back and she says, is it really true? And again, it may or may not be. But then she asks a question, how would your life be if you didn't believe that thought? Because we're just talking about our thoughts in response to a certain situation. And she goes further and she says, how would your life be? What would your life be like if you actually let that thought go? And more times than not in my life when I've had conflict or anxiety or been angry or pissed at someone or something... I will go through these things and realize that a lot of the anger and annoyance is something that's been conjured up in my brain and half the time the other person doesn't even know about it. And so it just, loving what is, not what you think is, learning to examine our beliefs can be very enlightening and it can be very relieving and, and let off stress. It can be another way where we kind of balance our stress hormones. 
So I find this very, very relaxing and uplifting and empowering. So, and I know those sound like buzzwords and they're not, they really aren't, is, is learning to examine situations for what they really are can be an amazing, an amazing experience. It can free up your brain. So, all right, number six, and this is the last one here. So don't fear the restart. All right. Here's the thing. These days, you know, back in maybe the 19, mid, the mid 20th century, you know, it was very common for people to have one job. They kept that job for whatever, 30 or 40 years. They'd have a little retirement party, be done, that's it. There was no restarting. You know, if you were a teacher, you taught for 30 years, you collected your pension, you moved to Florida, whatever. I'm just making that up, but you know, you get it. You moved, whatever, and you move on. Well, these days, it's actually rare for people to keep just one profession or one form of one career path. So I myself was kind of maybe early on this path because I started out as a teenager in cosmetology school. And that was awesome. It was a dream I had ever since I was a little girl. I always wanted to be the hairdresser. And I realized that when I did that, um, there was going to be more to it. I did not, I was afraid of being a hairdresser at age 19 and doing that for 40 years and realizing like, is that all there is to it? And so while I enjoyed doing it for a number of years, I felt it was important for me to go to school and learn something else. So I went on to become a respiratory therapist. And from there, I was a respiratory therapy instructor at the school that I actually graduated from. And that was great for a number of years until I had the pull to be a full-time stay-at-home mom. And I loved doing that. That happened for the next 20 plus years. Then I moved on and as a stay-at-home mom with a husband with a very strange hours, I would say, he kept a very busy and strange work schedule. I was alone with my kids a lot, but I also wanted to maintain, you know, I always had that drive to get the endorphins every day. I always had that drive for some sort of physical activity, and I became very creative at how I would accomplish that as a young mom. And I read as much as I could and learned as much as I could. And lo and behold, when my youngest kid was able to drive himself to school, I went ahead and certified as a trainer and nutritionist. And then that became, I liked it so much. I'm like, gosh, you know, this is going to be my next profession. So I've started over so many times already. And now even just this year, I started over as a podcast host. And it has been so enlightening and encouraging and fulfilling. So don't be afraid to start over. You really just might find that you like the new path better. So, and I never regret the other paths that I took, nor should anyone else. You know, they were, whatever we do is right for us at the time. But I, sometimes I think if it scares us, it's really worth giving it a try, at least giving it a thought and be like, okay, why not? You know, what do you have to lose? What could possibly go wrong? Look at those things and then think, like, could you start over? I know so many trainers right now. Now, I am still training and doing nutrition coaching, but in a whole different capacity, online and in person. And that's another story that we can talk about another time. But where was I going with that? Oh, it's just, you know, if I'd never given it a thought and tried, what would I have missed out on? I might have always done the woulda, coulda, shoulda, you know. What if I didn't become a trainer? What if I just kept it as a hobby? You know, I would have missed out on, I would have missed out on all these relationships with the wonderful women that I've come in contact with and how we up-level each other. I would have missed out on so much. So don't be afraid to start over because you just might find that you like the new situation better. It may suit you. So, and then I just have one little thing to add, and this is particularly important, I think, having gone through 2020 in the year of uncertainty with a pandemic and just the repeated lockdowns, not lockdown, lockdown, 
many of us have felt the urge to maybe relax our routines. And I would say what I have, if I've 2020 has taught me and taught me anything, it's taught me not to do that, to keep our routines and bookend our days. An AM routine and a PM routine can do wonders for just, you know, if you have a day when you just don't feel like whatever, but you stick to that routine, the end of the day, you're going to go to bed with more satisfaction. The morning routine and the evening routine, whatever that looks like for you, is so important. It's so important to keep it consistent and to just go with it. And so while this is not like rocket science or anything, it's just been some reflections on the last year and the years before that, in this case, of what I have found has definitely enriched my life. And I hope that even if you take one or two of these points and they've done anything for you, that you can just grab some benefits and see if it'll enrich your life in any way, even in some small way. Or maybe it will help you to improve the lives of others. Thank you so much for listening today. And remember, check back every Tuesday for a new episode. Also, occasionally on Thursdays, we will have quickie episodes called In a Nutshell.